Okay, what are we looking at? So far, we're looking at a completely blank piece of paper. So far, so boring. Specifically, it's actually wallpaper backing sheet. Why am I sat here with a blank piece of paper? Well, right now, I'm working on three new episodes of Paper Cuts. The episodes five, six, and seven. And somebody asked for a production vlog. So guess what? Production vlog. So what I thought I'd do was I'd document the life cycle of one of the sets. This is going to be one of the backgrounds that I use for filming paper cuts. This one is actually Tim's fault. It all starts with a really weird sense of humour. What I've got here is a pair of scripts. Episodes 5 and 6. They're both written by Tim Johnston, who collaborated with me on the script for episode 4, Pedro Electric. And it's actually a two-parter, which is the first time that Paper Cuts has done one of those. And here's where it relates to the big piece of paper. Episode 5, Scene 1. Captain and Pedro are busy moving boxes of supplies from a huge pile into a tumble-down shed with some wonky cardboard stabiliser fins and nose cone. So that's what this is going to be. This is going to be the area in front of the shed. And obviously it will feature the shed as well. So far, so good works on the page. The problem is that the main set that I use for the exterior of the character's residence just doesn't have room to accommodate this shed and big pile of boxes that Tim's on about. So the solution to the problem, right here, is going to be a whole new set to accommodate that stuff. Um, in terms of the geography of the, the area, it's going to be sort of off behind the house a bit, um, planning to do an establishing shot on the main set with a, a smaller version of the shed kind of poking out behind the house so you can you know, get an idea of how the, the different areas relate to each other. Um, but this is going to be the shed area. I won't tell you any more about the shed at this stage because that would spoil the episode when it comes out. But suffice to say, it's mostly just going to be a big empty scrubby patch of ground with various you know, grasses and shrubs and things poking out of it and then Around here, the shed. In terms of what actually goes into making a set, it's pretty simple really. It's just a piece of paper, um, sketch out the basic geography with a pencil, just box standard HB, nothing fancy, uh, rubber to fix my mistakes, which there will inevitably be. I never get every single detail right on the first take, so the rubber is quite important. And then once I've got all of the geography of the the area you know, nailed down how I want it, break out the pens and just ink over the pencil lines. Now the next burning question, presumably, is but why does it have to be so big? The answer is that because of the way I'm animating this, those actual physical paper cutouts, everything has to be done in scale. These here are the master character cutouts for Pedro, Frogmore and Millimeter. Ultimately it comes down to the size of my hands. The thickness of my fingers determines the size of the smallest object that I can practically work with, which means that these three characters are pretty much as small as they can be without getting difficult to work with. At least 95% of each character's screen time is done with these specific bits of cardboard and therefore all of the sets have to be scaled so that the environment will be in proportion with these characters. Because it's a, it's a big, spacious exterior, the, the shed area needs to be maybe not quite as big as I've actually made this, but it, pretty much that big. And of course not all of the sets are this big. This is my best paper, it's an A2 cartridge pad. I use pages out of this to create the kitchen and living room sets. And then several of the other sets have been even smaller than that, particularly the Pancake Farm in episode one, uh, China in episode two, and several others which have gone out of my head right now, uh, have all been done on, on uh, quite a small paper, it's A4 card. A little bit of one corner of the field is all you need for the Pancake Farm. As long as you've got the, the wall, the grass, and the, and the sign saying Derek Shrove's Pancake Farm, you're sorted. So I can get away with using quite a small piece of paper. 
other environments, e.g. this one around the shed, need more room to breathe. Um, and I want to be able to get you know, zoom out and get wider shots on those sets, which is why they end up being bigger bits of paper. At the other extreme, just there on the tip of my finger, is the smallest prop that I've had to make for the series so far. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what that is yet, because it's actually kind of a plot point, but Tim put something in the script which specified relative to the characters it needed to be that small, so that's how small it is. Um, needless to say, very, very fiddly. Ow! What was that? What was what, Senor? <laughs>